Hello, welcome to the farm. Today's about the birds and the bees. The hummingbirds and the honeybees, that is. So what's the plan? Well, as you know, we have our bees here. It's an open field. We get a lot of wind in the winter and I need to protect the bees. So we just have a little fence here and we're gonna build a wind wall. Um, so I'm gonna take care of the first part. I'll rip out the old fence and then I'll bring the tractor and the auger and I'll put in a heavier posts. but I'm gonna need your help. I can do that. All right, we'll go to the sawmill, get our lumber, and then I'm gonna need your carpentry skills. Put the oh, fence yeah. up. I can do that. <laughs> I'll help you plant the honeysuckle, right? Yeah, because that's the second part. After he builds the wall, I'm going to hopefully vine native honeysuckle all over it to attract hummingbirds. So thus, the connection between the birds and, and the, the bees. bees. Well, today we're going to tear down the old wall and put up a bigger, heavier wall. Because in the farm here, we get a lot of wind. It's mostly west wind in the fall and then northwest later in the winter. And that's very tough on the bees. So um, I'm going to tear out the old one. And it has uh, some smaller fence posts in there. And just last year, we put in underground electric. So we took down three telephone poles and the power company was good enough to leave them here. So I cut them to right size and we're going to use the auger on the tractor to drill the holes and put the heavy duty posts in. And then we're gonna put a solid wall that's about six feet high up. So uh, I guess the biggest thing we need to watch for is we're kind of in the runway of the bees right here. <laughs> Their takeoff and landing points in the other direction. So I think we'll be all right. Right, Brenda? You're the one that wants to do it without a suit. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All right, well, let's take down these boards. All right, making progress. Uh, I'm going to take the B sign down and the last board. go. Caution bees. All right, now I can pull these posts out. These are just uh, fence posts. They aren't, aren't real heavy in. Uh, let's see how the old school method works. Lifting with the legs. All right. Oh, hey, there we go. Still got it, babe. Ah. Who needs a tractor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One more to go. There goes nothing. Oh, five that was an easy five, one. Babe. These are pressure treated. They're still pretty heavy. I'm gonna use them for something else. Yeah. All right, well, I won't be carrying the other ones. That's for sure. They're a lot heavier. So, all right, I'm gonna pull the tractor in and get the auger going. Well, the holes went pretty easy, didn't hit any rocks. Now I have to decide, am I gonna do the smart way and go in and put the pallet fork on and haul them over, or am I just gonna try to wrestle them, manhandle them over? I think I'm gonna try one, just drag it over and put it in place, see how it happens. And then uh, we'll see how it goes.
Hey, it might work. Here comes the hard part. <laughs> you made it look easy. Old man power. <laughs> Well, I got the hardest part done, the part that I was dreading or stalling off on this project. So I need to uh, put a little more soil and then I'll get the uh, digging iron, tamp them in good. Then next I need to get the oak boards to go between it. And I'm going to take you with me to my favorite sawmill in the forest and we're going to get some freshly cut oak 1x6. So come along. Road trip time. So we're leaving the farm, see all the farmlands, and we're headed into the forest to our favorite sawmill. So we'll show you what it's like in the forest. Well, here we are going up the mountain. We're in the Michaux State Forest. We, in the farm, we are in the valley, the Great Cumberland Valley, and this mountain is on the edge of the valley. Uh, we're about a half hour from, from the farm. That this forest is sentimental to us because Brenda and I owned a cottage here before we owned the farm. And we used to come up to the mountains pretty much every weekend. We loved it, didn't we? Yep, yeah, but we loved the farm. Yeah, the cottage helped to prepare us for the farm, I think. Yeah, it did in many ways. All right, the sawmill, beautiful, one by six, it's rough cut, oak boards. These boards will last forever on a fence. Now I got a load 30 of them. We were careful to install the first board using our level to make sure that we could use spacers off of this board and we'd have a proper uh, installation with level boards. And we decided to use spacers between the boards because these um, from the sawmill are not kiln dried and sometimes they twist and warp a little. So I wanted to leave room for that. So I cut the first board as eight foot long and we used them in the center. All the others had odd lengths and we put them on either side knowing that we were gonna trim them at the end. Looking pretty good. I used some of the old lumber and cut it in a smaller dimension to give it an added interest. And here's your assistant. I can really hold those boards still. <laughs> yeah, and you keep my interest <laughs> yeah, through funny. the project. And in Pennsylvania, it can be 40 one day and 80 the next. And that's what happened here. One day we're working in winter coats, next day we're in shorts. Well, you can see the wind, how it's blowing. <laughs> that was a windy day. The trees, day. yeah. So finally, the, the last part of the project was just uh, marking uh, the plumb line down and trimming the boards. And we had our faithful assistant with us most of the time, Buddy the cat, who thinks he's a dog, hung around and watched us do all the work. I think it looks good in the end. I really like it. Okay, we finally finished the wall and it is solid. Uh, I think we had two good rains mm -hmm. after these posts were put in and because they're so huge and the hole is only slightly bigger than the post, so they're rock solid. So I feel really good about the wall. In fact, we had a lot of, of uh, wind the other day and we got to even test it out with the um, amount of wind that it blocks. So mm -hmm. is my part done now? Yes, he did a good job. And how'd you like my carpentry skills? <laughs> I can hold a board like nobody. But I couldn't have done it without you. True, he needed me. Yeah, I did. Okay, now the hard part's over for me. I get to start the fun part, and that is to vine native honeysuckle up this wall. 
And this area doesn't look like much, but there's a lot of natives. There's bee balm, lupine. Um, is it black-eyed Susan? There's black-eyed Susans, there's daisies, there's yarrow. And right here is a spice bush that attracts spice bush swallowtails. So it's gonna be a very pretty area, lots of stuff for the bees and other pollinators. So I can't wait to get the honeysuckle vining over over here. Now I'll show you what it's gonna look like once I do that. Well, we should go over to the garden and show, show them mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's really pretty. All right, so this is what the bee ball should look like in about two years. This is native honeysuckle. The uh, white stuff that you're familiar with is not native, it's actually invasive. It, it smells good, but it's not native. This is the native stuff. It's just starting to open up and hummingbirds love this stuff. So we should have tons of hummingbirds around the bees. There's already a ton around the garden, so I can't wait. I have a bunch of it rooted in a couple weeks. I'll plant it out there, keep it watered, and it'll take off. Well, thanks for joining us as we built our bee wall. I think the bees are happy. I think they like it. So, hope you're having a good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.